Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. It is so nice to be in Chile. We're back. It's been a while. Um, this is actually a picture my husband took in November of 2017. This is Vulcan Osorno in the south. Um, and we did a trip uh, down there to visit, and it's a gorgeous country, so if you get to get down there, definitely highly recommend it. Um, I'm a mathematician. I'm going to tell you what decomposable abelian and varieties means at some point in the talk, but I wanted to spend a few minutes first talking about myself. So as a mathematician, one of the things I particularly like about listening to folks from other disciplines is that we all have our norms of how we give talks and what a talk means in each of our disciplines. And in 20 years of doing math talks, I've never sat down, so I'm going to stand because <laughs> I'm not going to start now, so I'm just going to stand. I have to use my hands, so I'll, I'll hit something if I'm sitting down. Um, okay, so uh, uh, we had a map in the last talk, but if, for those of you in the audience who don't know where Grinnell is, it's in Iowa. Um, it's about five hour drive west of Chicago. Um, if you're at least of a certain age, um, you might have seen Field of Dreams, which is a baseball movie, or Bridges of Madison County, which is a tr sort of tragic love story. Those are both set in Iowa. They were filmed in Iowa. That's what Iowa looks like. Uh, so that's Iowa for you. If you have not seen those movies, uh, this is a picture I took just out. I, I live in a little town in Iowa, so this is just outside of that town. Um, in the summer, uh, you notice that the, the fields are mainly corn and soybean, but they're actually mainly grown for animal feed. There's, I mean, there's wonderful sweet corn. Come, come in August sometime to visit. I'll get you some really great sweet corn, but most of the fields are grown for animal consumption. Okay, so that's Iowa. So why am I in Chile? Most of you have Chile in your title somewhere. Mine does not have the word Chile at all. Well, Bob, I'm sorry to tell you, but actually mathematics now is much more of an inter uh, intercollaborative environment. And so I'm coming to work with colleagues. Craig's pictures of the students with writing their best parts of their poems and putting them together. I think that's a fantastic analogy in mathematics. We each have our ideas we think about on our own, and then we get together and try to figure out the problems together, putting the best pieces together. So, uh, so that's sort of the analogy. So my first stop is here in Santiago for a month. I'm going to work with um, uh, Dr. Anita Rojas, who's at Universidad de Chile uh, in Nuñoa. And um, she and I have worked together before. This picture is actually of her at a desk at Grinnell College in Iowa. She got to come for a semester through a program at my college. Uh, so I'm excited to return the favor and come back here. Um, we've collaborated before. We have a paper we already wrote. We have others on the way. So I'll spend a month here. One of her students is defending her PhD. I'm on her defense committee. So a lot of great things there. And then I'm on to Temuco, um, farther south um, at uh, UFRO. There's a really great research group. Uh, they have a lovely name. If there are any mathematicians watching, um, it's got some great puns, the frontier, and then there's this pole of development. Poles mean something in, in this part of math, so there's some good, there's some good puns there. So uh, this is the group I'm working with. Uh, Dr. Ruby Rodriguez is my main host, but uh, there's a really great team there. We're going to work together. Uh, we have some ideas. I've met them all before, but we haven't actually had a chance to collaborate. And while uh, you can do some of this on Zoom, having two months to be there and walk in and out of offices and ask questions and challenge each other is going to be really fantastic. I'm teaching a short course down there. They started a PhD program not that long ago, a couple years ago. So I'm going to um, be teaching a short course while I'm down there. OK, so that's a bit of the why am I in Chile. Let's talk about what we're going to do. So there's three words in my title of my project. Two are abelian variety. This is an object. Uh, what is it? Well, that's part of the short course I'm teaching, so I won't uh, say too much, but I want to give you an idea of what this means. So that's my goal today. Uh, but before we answer that question, we have to answer some other questions. So first of all, what is, we're going to go back to the word curve. Uh, curves for today just assume are equations with two variables. And if there's anyone who knows a lot of math in the audience or watching, I'm going to lie a little bit in a couple of places just to make things clear. So, so you know, if you're, if you're bothered by something I say, I'm happy to talk about it. Later, if you want to know any more details about the math, I'm happy to talk about them later. But today, I want to keep it as general as possible. So equations uh, with two variables, an x and a y, that's what we mean by a curve. Lots of different examples of what curves could be here. Um, things you saw when you were little in, in your you know, junior high school's uh, classes, probably. Um, and so what do we mean by this? Let me go into a little more detail. So if I take one equation, y equals 3x minus 2. So this is 
a line. You may remember this y equals mx plus b. That means it's a line, uh, at least if you were trained in the US. Um, and we have associated to that equation a picture, which we call, you know, a graph, we often call it. And it's a way of telling us what the solutions are. What x and y numbers can you put in that make this equation true? So if I write 3x minus 2, well, for example, I could take x to be 0. And if x is 0, then the only way for this to be true is if y is negative 2. And then on this Cartesian plane, this xy plane, we plot 0 in the x direction and negative 2, which is down in the y direction, and we get a point on the, gra on the graph. So when we draw graphs, we're just demonstrating all the solutions. If you want numbers that satisfy this equation, it's just along this line. So for example, if x is 1, y has to be 1. That's the only x and that's the only y uh, value that will work with that particular x. So 1, 1 is a point on here, and so on. You can put negative numbers in for x. Um, you can put fractions in here as well. This is in the real number system. You can put any kind of real number. But 3 halves, if you put that in, y is 5 halves. So these pictures are representations of curves. So, uh, the curves are the equations, but we also have the graph associated to them. Okay. And a different example, this is just to show these don't have to be functions for people who know some math, but uh, equation x squared plus y squared equals 9. There's some symmetry here. If a positive x value and y value work, the negatives will as well because when you square them, they all become positive. So, so you notice that the point 3, 0 is on here. If x is 3 and y is 0, that works. But also negative 3, 0, because if you if, if put negative 3 in and square it, you get 9 as well. So there's some symmetry, and that will come up in a moment for a different example. Okay, so that's curve. Think of it as an equation, and we have a graph, a picture associated with it. Okay, so there's something called an elliptic curve. These are, this is a huge area in mathematics, um, in certain parts of mathematics. And um, elliptic curves are a special case of this abelian variety thing that I haven't told you what that is yet. But elliptic curves are a special case. They're particular curves of this form. y squared equals a cubic equation, so x cubed, and then ax plus b, where a and b are some numbers. And again, I'm lying, a little, this is the place where I'm lying a tiny bit. There's something a little, you have to add an extra couple conditions in. But almost anything you would write like this is an elliptic curve. So there, this is the equation. It's y squared equals a cubic. I'm going to show you, first of all, graph with just y equals a cubic, because you may remember that from your pre-calculus. If you had like a pre-calculus course or something titled something like that, you'd see a cubic equations tend to have pictures that look something like this. They, they go up like that. That's often how they look. And that's y equals something with an x cubed in it. Um, Elliptic curves have a squared on the y, though. So what happens is there's a bit of symmetry here. So the, uh, if you put, remember what I said with the circle, positive y's and negative y's. It's, if a positive y works, a negative y will also work. So what's going to happen in the next picture, you'll see this bottom part disappears. And this part here is reflected uh, across the x-axis. You get some symmetry. Because if a positive y and an x pair work, the negative y and the x pair will work as well. And so elliptic curves look something like this. This is what, there, there are a few other pictures, but this is how, what many elliptic curves will look like. This is what an equation like y squared equals a cubic equation looks like. OK, so um, that's the equation, the curve. That's the graph. There's one more aspect of elliptic curves that make them special relative to just any old curve sitting out there. And it's something called a group. So the next thing I have to tell you about mathematically is what is a group. So group, and I'll give you several examples of this. A group is if you just take a set of any kind of objects, and you want to combine them in some way, and you'll get another object that's still in that set. Okay? So it's a way of explaining how to take two elements, put them together, and get somebody else in that set. We're going to talk about addition and multiplication of numbers, for example. That's a, an example of this. There are some other conditions here that I've added that it really it's not as just this, but uh, you can, if you're first time seeing groups, you're very welcome to think about it this way. Okay? So we're going to take objects, combine them, and get a third element. Okay? So what are examples? Well, like I said, numbers. If I take 3 and 5, we all know how to add them, and we get the number 8, although if somebody was talking about 
someone else not knowing how to find the tip. And I have to say as mathematicians, arithmetic is something which we are proudly terrible at. So like I also cannot do basic arithmetic whatsoever. So I'm, I'm with the, the, the student who had that the issue. So three plus five, you add these two numbers, you get a third, you get another number. There's a way to do this multiplication. I take negative four and six and I multiply them together and I get another number. These are forming what are called groups. There are, it's not just that you can do this, there are other conditions. So one important condition for addition as a group is that there's an opposite element that gets you zero. If I give you any number, you can give me another number, it's negative, and that will get you zero. These are called inverses. You have to have something called inverses. Uh, and the same for multiplication, if you allow fractions, you have, there's, if I give you a number, you can always find another number, another, it could be a fraction, another number, and you multiply them together, and you get one in this case. Let me give you a couple of other examples of where you can add, take two elements in the set and do an, op, do an operation on them and get another element. So uh, if you remember polynomials from back in the day, so these are just equations with powers of x in them, that's what polynomials are. And you may have seen how to add them together. We add based on the same exponent of in the x, and that is forming a group. You take two polynomials, you add them together, you get out another polynomial. Okay. I'm going to skip the multiplication one because that's kind of a that's a real lie. I, I have a typo on that one. So, uh, <laughs> if you happen to have seen matrices, if that's if, if you took maybe a linear algebra course, if you if you that uh, kind of math or uh, in high school sometimes they teach matrices nowadays but you can add these objects up those numbers you add them in the same place that they are you add them you get matrices uh, you get a group you can also multiply matrices it's a com more complicated process you have to add or multiply a row by a column and then add it it's a process but the output is another uh, one of these objects a matrix this actually isn't quite a group because of these inverses. You can't always have, if, if you took some linear algebra, they talk about invertible matrices, there are not always inverses. Very technical statement here, but you need the determinant to be non-zero to get an inverse. And so that's, that subset would be a group. Okay. So as mathematicians, we don't want to study numbers and polynomials and matrices all by themselves. We want to study these objects together all at once. So we study groups. And over the last century, there's been a lot of work about classifying or er, of finding lots of results about groups. So people have proved all kinds of things about groups. Unlike most other disciplines, we don't throw out our theories, so they just kind of build and build. You, the, the things that were true 100 years ago we still are still true now. And so we've had this huge wealth of knowledge about groups. And so any object that has a group, we can take all that knowledge we know and apply it to the particular. So, where does this come back to these abelian varieties? I'm getting there, believe it or not. Um, so let's go back to our elliptic curves again, because one of the things that separates elliptic curves out is that there's a nice way to add points on these graphs uh, in a very, what we call, natural way. So again, an elliptic curve, just an equation, this particular family of equations. And remember, we had the picture of it. And there's a way to say if I take two points on that picture, anywhere on there, and I draw the line between them, it will hit another point. So don't take two points in a vertical line. That's a technicality I can talk about later. But as long as you don't take a vertical line and you draw any line through there, it's going to hit in three places. So we want to say if I want to add two points, if I want to start with two points and find another point, I can take the two points, draw the line, put, find what that third point is. And you can do this with equations. There's these big, ugly equations you can deal with, but pictorially, it's much better. Okay. Just to see this idea, I've got two here. Find the third one. That's my way of adding. This is forms of a group on these elliptic curves. I lied, though. I'll tell you why I lied there. This doesn't actually quite work. This other thing called an identity, which I haven't talked about, fails if you make that the operation. So it turns out to add two points. You find the third point on the line that, inter that intersects with the other two points, and then you look at the reflection across the x-axis, which remember earlier we talked about these elliptic curves, there's nice symmetry, so there's going to be a point on the other side. And it turns out that's what you define. For technical reasons, that's what we mean by adding P and Q. You're going to get that point down there. Okay? And it forms this group. It has this beautiful structure 
on it. And that structure has been used in really powerful ways, um, including some of the ways that we try to secure credit card numbers to actually use this kind of operation behind the scenes. Um, all right, so now you're ready for the definition of abelian variety, sort of. So now, we're, it's like elliptic curves. There's going to be a beautiful group, group structure on these objects. So we can take all these hundred years of knowledge and apply it to these objects. And now we don't just have one equation, one curve. We have a whole bunch of them. And we're looking for how they all, the solutions to all of them at once. And we are also looking at um, multiple variables. So not just two variables. These are in high dimension. So you could have seven different variables that you're trying to find solutions for as well. And so that's what abelian variety roughly is. Uh, and the core piece of this is this group structure on it makes it really nice and beautiful things you can study about. So we're almost done. There's one more word in my, so that was two thirds of my title right there, abelian <laughs> variety. One third of my title is the word decomposable. So what do I mean by that mathematically? Well, another thing you may remember from uh, maybe grade school is factoring numbers into their prime factorization. So these are factor trees. So if you remember these or you saw these, but you take a number and you can break it down until you get it into just prime numbers. And we talk about factoring it into primes. And the idea is primes can't break down anymore. They're numbers that have no divisors besides one in themselves. So 3 is just 1 times 3, whereas 12 is 1 times 12, or 3 times 4, 2 times 6. So primes you can't break down anymore. They're sort of the building blocks. And there's things you can say, like if you know the factorization is this, well, you know there's a 2, that means it's an even number. So that's something you can say by looking at so what my colleagues and I work on is taking these objects called abelian varieties, whatever they are, and finding ways to break them into smaller pieces and learning something about the abelian varieties by the little pieces that we have along, uh, that we know about. And some of those little, little pieces are the elliptic curves that I was talking about earlier. Those are sort of the, a little bit analogous to the prime numbers. They're our building blocks. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Mason, Antonio. It's been a few years of so trying to do this, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm not on sabbatical right now, so Brunel College did some nice things to help me get down here, so I also appreciate that. Thank you. Yay.